Apple just dropped iOS 26, and if you've seen the demo, you already know what's different. They call it the Liquid Glass UI. Liquid Glass. Liquid Glass. Liquid Glass. In this session, we'll go over some of the core dynamic properties of Liquid Glass. The Liquid Glass UI. A complete redesign that looks like something pulled out of the future. I've had iOS 26 for about two weeks. Overall, I think this is debatably the best update that Apple's done in a very long time. Everything bends, flows, shimmers. It's sleek. It's fluid. And it's absolutely Apple. But for some users, it's also a complete mess. Okay, is it just because I'm an Android guy or does this not look good? Two days to look at liquid glass and try to get used to it, but it still just looks bad, dude. Because while this new design looks incredible, it's causing a lot of people to ask a very uncomfortable question. Did Apple just ruin iOS? Let's break down what's really going on. So what is liquid glass UI? It's not just a new look. It's Apple's new design language for the iPhone. Every part of the interface now has a glass-like texture. Buttons ripple. Menus fade in like fog. And gestures feel like they're moving across a pane of liquid. It's inspired by spatial design, clearly influenced by Vision Pro. And it's meant to unify how Apple's devices feel, whether you're using a phone, a tablet, or a headset. Sounds ambitious, right? And visually, it is. But once you start using it, like actually using it, the cracks begin to show. Let's start with the basics. Things that used to feel instant now feel slow. Swiping between apps comes with this trailing motion blur. Opening the control center feels delayed. Even unlocking your phone is paired with a soft zoom and ripple effect that adds animation but subtracts speed. It's a subtle change, but over time, it adds friction, and it's not just in your head. Even on brand new devices like the iPhone 15 Pro, users are reporting minor lags and stutters, especially when multitasking. On older phones, it's worse. iPhone 13 and 12 users are saying the UI feels heavier, more bloated, like it's trying too hard to look beautiful and forgetting to be efficient. Battery life is another hit. Those motion effects. And something I found over the last couple months is my iPhone battery has significantly dropped in terms of battery health. They're powered by the GPU. More visual load means more drain. It's not catastrophic, but it's noticeable. And if you care about accessibility, here's the issue. Motion heavy UIs can trigger discomfort, fatigue, or motion sickness for some users. Apple does offer a reduce motion setting, but even with that turned on, some effects remain. You can tone it down, but you can't turn it off. That leads to a bigger question. Why is Apple doing this? Well, liquid glass isn't just about iPhones. It's about Apple's future. Apple wants one cohesive visual experience across iOS, macOS, iPad OS and Vision OS. The shimmer, the blur, the way things move, all of it is meant to feel spatial, immersive, and futuristic. It's smart from a brand perspective, but from a user perspective, it feels like we're being pushed into a new world without asking for it. And Apple isn't giving us a choice. You can't switch back to the old interface. You can't tone things down beyond a basic setting. You either go full liquid glass or don't update at all. And let's be honest, most people will update whether they want to or not. That's the Apple way. But the reaction? It's split. Some people love it. I have used iOS 26 for one day. Here's what I think. I really like the new round design Apple has gone for. So far, I am impressed. I really like the way that that liquid glass. The new liquid glass UI style is straight up amazing. They say it feels alive, modern, almost magical. But others, they're calling it unnecessary, over-designed, distracting. Take a look at Reddit. Scroll through Twitter. You'll see comments like, I just want my phone to feel fast again. Why is everything see-through now? It looks cool, but it's starting to get in the way. And here's where the controversy really kicks in. 
because Apple's always been about simplicity, clean design, function over flash. Now, it feels like they're designing for the demo video, not for the people actually using the product every day. And that shift, it's subtle, but dangerous. It's giving people flashbacks to iOS 7, when Apple ditched realism for flat design. That move was bold, but it also came with bugs, backlash, and a learning curve. Liquid Glass feels similar. It's Apple once again redefining what iOS looks like, but maybe not thinking hard enough about how it feels to use. And it's not just aesthetics. Developers are struggling too. Some major apps are glitching out under the new UI. Buttons are misaligned. Menus flicker when layered over liquid glass elements. It's not a stable environment yet, and it shows. This is where Apple usually shines. Tight integration, smooth rollout, everything just works. But this time, it feels like the design shipped before the ecosystem was ready. So where does this leave us? Here's the honest take. Apple's liquid glass UI is not a total failure. In fact, it might become something great once it matures. But right now, it's stuck between ambition and execution, between the future Apple wants and the present users are still living in. It looks incredible, but it's slower, less intuitive, more about being seen than being used. And for a company that built its empire on it just works, that's a step in the wrong direction. What could Apple do? Simple, give us options. Let us turn off some of the visual noise. Let us speed up transitions. Let the interface serve the user, not show off in front of them. Liquid glass isn't the problem. Forcing it on everyone is. Because great design, it's not just what you see, it's what you don't notice. The best UI disappears. It gets out of your way. And right now, iOS 26 doesn't do that. So, did Apple ruin iOS? Not completely. But they did make a choice that feels less about users and more about image. And if they keep chasing that feeling, they risk losing the very thing that made the iPhone feel magical in the first place. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you love liquid glass? Hate it? somewhere in between. And if you want more honest takes like this, hit subscribe. Because in the next video, we're talking about a feature Apple quietly removed in iOS 26 and why some users are furious. See you there.